Elite Dangerous. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words, the words of the developer. That means you, David. Take control of your own starship in a cutthroat galaxy. Elite Dangerous brings gaming's original open world adventure into the modern generation with a connected galaxy, evolving narrative and the entirety of the Milky Way recreated at its full galactic proportions. Yes guys, I reviewed this when it was early access, uh, before it was released, it was kind of like an alpha or, or beta, um, but it was well over a year ago and I haven't revisited it since, although I have looked at Horizons. After I did my review, and not a consequence of my review by the way, but after I reviewed Horizons, they changed everything. Um, it was initially like a season pass standalone thing. Now. And, and you used to get Elite Dangerous if you bought it and it was about £50 or something. Now they've changed everything. Horizons is a season pass for £24.99, so £25. And you don't get Elite Dangerous with it. So it's kind of like, well you know what a season pass is, it's a series of DLCs that's going to be coming out over the course of the year. If you buy the season pass you get them all. If you don't buy the season pass, I will imagine they will come in modules that you can buy. I don't know that for certain. Anyway, Elite Dangerous, what is it? Well, well, anyone who watched my original review will know that this is a special game for me. It kind of saved me from a whole load of shit that was going on in my life back in the 80s when I played it on my Commodore 64. I'm not going to go into all that. I mentioned a bit of that in the first review that I did. So... What's changed then since the first review? Well, we now have what's called power play. We also have some new ships and bobbleheads. But for those of you who don't obla, I'm going to explain what Elite Dangerous is. You start off with a free ship. It's a little shitty ship, but it has a weapon on it and it has a little bit of cargo room. It's, and you get 100 credits, I think. And you're thrown out in the middle of the, of the galaxy. Now, you can choose to play this in a single player sense, or you can play this as a multiplayer, hostile, PvP, you will be ganked and raped by all the big in the big ships, which is great. I strongly advise you do not go into open world until you are ready, because it's brutal out there, but it's great fun. So, how does the game work? Well, it's a basic game where you can it's a role-playing game you just get immersed in in your role you can be a trader or you can be a military kind of captain you don't choose that as in a, a specific role you just do that you do navy missions if you want and build your rank up and buy fighter ships and and all that kind of stuff or if you like the idea of um, being a bit of a Dell boy and a trader you buy a big cargo ship or you buy both and you just do what I do. I've got a big cargo ship and I've got a fighter and I just, you know, whatever I feel like. If I want to do a, an, an hour or two of trading and put some good tunes on and just chill out, then I do that. If I want to go and kick some ass, I, I launch uh, my fighter, which is great because it means that you, you're not going to get bored quickly of doing the same thing over and over again. So how do you get money? Well, trading, buying and selling. It's as simple as that. Um, that is the basic way of earning money. You buy cheap, sell high. So it's supply and demand. You get a lot of information about the planets and what they are, the type of economies they are. So you get a bit of an idea of what to take to different places and whether or not it's going to be a profit. What I've found, and a top tip here, if you're new to the game, don't bother with the trading to build up your finances. What you want to do is go to what's called the bulletin board. These are mission boards that are at every single station. Now, if you go there, you can do some very dodgy business, like slave trading which is great. It's great, guys. It's dodgy, obviously. You don't want to get caught off the, the wrong authorities with a bunch of freaking slaves hidden away under your floorboards. But if you can get away with it, it, there's some really good money to be had in there. So there's two different types of starport around each kind of planet-like space station. There are the big ones, and then there are the platforms. Now, the big ones are the ones you fly into. Don't take slaves or drugs or weapons to them. It tells you whether they're illegal there. They probably all are. They have scanners and patrols all over the place. If you want to do a dodgy deal, go to the platforms. They're all run by people who don't give a fuck. So you're going to be able to get straight in and out and it's all profit. You'll know by when you're asked if you want to take the mission, it will say in brackets, outpost. If it's an outpost, take the dodgy stuff there. Anyway, get back on the game. You can make a lot of money that way. That's how I earned my money. Then I did a bit of trading. 
Um, there are rare gem runs, which are about an hour, uh, like an hour circle. Some of them are bigger, some of them take three hours. And you just buy rare gems and you do a big jump around. And there's plenty of info on the forums as to which routes is the more lucrative. And you can make a, you can make millions doing that. I did a few of them as well. So there's a lot going on. Where I found I'm making the most money is as a bounty hunter. I bought this fast attack fighter, which is probably the most deadly ship in the game. It's a fast, light, heavily armed ship, but it can't maintain very good power. So you have to be careful when you, you have to know what you're doing when you're buying these kind of ships, because you've got to switch off certain things in your modules. You have so much control over your ship. It's amazing. You can switch power to systems which powers every system on your ship engines which gives you the engine power and weapons which gives you the the weapon power but more than that you can go into every module that you've bought for your ship because you can buy a shit loads of stuff from chaff launchers you buy obviously your shields your weapons your engines and uh, you buy everything you just you just have a shell of a ship and you just put whatever you want it's totally customizable but you can choose the power priorities of that so that when your ship's power core overloads it will start it, it starts shutting down modules so you tell it to shut down the non-important stuff so that you can still maintain combat or, or get away so there's there is a little bit of a learning curve to this game, but it's nowhere near as bad as EVE. I mean, I did try EVE and I just couldn't get me here. It was like Spreadsheet Simulator. I just didn't, didn't really like it. If I can play this, anybody can play this because I'm, you know, I just can't be asked with complex stuff nowadays. It's a sign of getting old. So your ship is highly customizable in the shipyard. You can put all kinds of stuff on there and it's really good to do that and this is one of the carrots in this game you have like a lot of rewards like the carrot on the stick for doing the grind you can buy a lot of ships there is a sh ton of ships to buy in this game from like i say cargo fighters to big multi-purpose ships i mean i'm currently about to buy a python because I, I, it's, it's quite a huge ship very expensive but I'm saving up for it but what you have to be careful when you're buying a ship is that you can afford the insurance because you spend like 20 million on a ship and then you fly it out the space dock and get raped it's gone unless you have insurance now to have insurance it just basically means that if you die you can buy your ship back exactly as it was for a premium price and that gets expensive when you get onto the really big ships like the Anaconda. I, I like to get immersed in it. I get lost in it. I put my tunes on and I just get lost. Playing this with the Oculus Rift is even better, by the way. It's just insane with the with the Rift. Um, so what changes have they made? Let's get onto the power play stuff. Power play is like faction control. You have all these different factions who control their own segments of space. And the great thing about it is when you sign up for a faction, you decide which areas of space they control by taking them over in, in fighting and uh, trading and, and whatever you want to do. So it's not just about combat. You can do this through trade or by force, which is a really nice touch. The problem that I have with it is it's kind of not done that well. I think there's far too many factions and I think it would have been much better if you'd had say three big factions and nothing else and it was more of an organized kind of war because at the minute there's no massive consequences for straying into other people's areas you know I've, I've only been attacked once really you know when you look at the like the old Star Trek the original series of Star Trek when the Klingons and the Federation were at war then you had the bloody Romulans as well so you had these three big freaking factions all hated each other's guts and every week somebody would die because you'd stray into the neutral zone and there's a Romulan oh there's a fucking Klingon just appeared there you know and there was hell on I mean that was good TV I mean obviously the acting was horrific and Kirk was a nutcase you know Kirk used to just shag the women he would he shagged half his fucking crew and he would just fire first ask questions later you know but now with Star Trek, it's all turned namby pamby. Far too many women on board, and you know there's morals. The morals. Kirk had no fucking morals. Kirk just says, "Hey, fucking shoot that." C so I would have liked to see the the power play done a little bit better. Um, but what you can do with this is there is a progression system within the power play. So you sign up, and if you do enough grinding for them, they will give you some nice rewards. Like I'm doing bounty hunting at the minute, and I. Well, I haven't played it for a few weeks, so I've lost all my credibility with my faction, but I, I did work my way well up in, in the faction, and I was getting some nice big bonuses um, 
for killing other ships, which was great. So I was earning millions. I mean, you can go out and go to a high extraction point and easily make a million credits in 20 minutes if you get the, the right ships um, appearing there. So it is lucrative being a bounty hunter. The game itself is disappointing to me because one of the things that made the original so good was the Thargoids, Thargons. Um, these were an alien race that had like flying saucers and when they came into co when you could be fighting with a uh, another another ship another human uh, kind of humanoid ship uh, I was a bounty hunter and, and and a pirate in the original and I got all the way to elite ranking just being by being a pirate and doing narcotic runs I was just a complete badass and you would be in the middle of just fighting some large cargo ship and then you'd get a Thargon coming into the area and they were evil because what they did, they launched these drones. I can't remember whether the Thargons are the drones and the Thargoids are the big ships or the other way around. It doesn't really matter, but the idea is these were kick-ass, highly maneuverable, well-armed ships. And it was quite fun having that and I really miss them. And I know they're going to come into this game, but it's been well over a year now and I haven't even seen so much as a piece of Thargon shit. Yeah, well, I wouldn't because they're kind of robots, but you know what I'm saying? It's um, it's odd to me that they don't have that because there needs to be a lot more going on in the galaxy. It is a lonely, lonely place out there uh, in Elite, but it is worth a buy because it's a great game and it's only £20 and there are a hell of a lot worse things you can put £20 into. But it does come with a word of warning unless you have a decent flight stick i wouldn't bother because it's just not going to cut it with a mouse um i'm using an x52 pro the side deck and it's amazing for this game but it's a 150 pound piece of kit so it's not cheap there are better things out there obviously um, but you know you can pick up a, a a flight stick with a throttle on it for like 30 pound which will do for something like this the game itself is fun it's a very long uh, game you can play you can just throw hundreds of hours of, of this if you're into trading into fighting into spaceships into customization into risk v reward into the progression system of buying bigger and better ships and working towards a goal it's fun you can play it with your friends you can actually uh, this is what i love about this you can play single player you can play multiplayer in the sense of joining the big open world where it's hostile or you can create your own group where only people that you add as friends will actually come into and that's great because you can play with your friends the problem with that is it's very poorly implemented when trying to fly in a wing um, you can do it I have done it but oh man talk about doing it the wrong f***ing way it pisses me off when I when you have to go through so much of a f***ing ordeal just to fly four guys from one place to another using six or seven jumps it could be so much easier and it's so much of a painstaking chore to do that again as well when one of you gets attacked if one of you gets interdicted and pulled out of hyperspace um, you've got to fly to their wake and all that I mean why can't why why do we have to do that why can't we just we're flying as a wing surely to goodness with all the technology we've got it would be like it is in sci-fi films where you can just kind of say right look I'm locked onto him I'm, I'm going there and just set course straight to him and bam you know without having to find this little fucking wake and then make sure you're flying at it from the right direction or it'll say I'm sorry you're flying at this from the wrong direction meanwhile your mate's getting raped off six fucking pirates you know it's bollocks it should be so much simpler and easier two buttons one set everybody's ship to this guy's ship and then oh he's been pulled out of hyperspace click target your friend off I go bam I'm there easy and much more fun like that but yeah but it has everything for a space game um, I don't know how it's gonna fare against um, Mr. Roberts's uh, Star Citizen but we'll find out because I am gonna do Star Citizen this year for those who have been constantly nagging me to do it I'm gonna do it this year I will no matter what state the game is in at some point this year I'm jumping into Star Citizen um, and I'm gonna give you the lowdown on that I hope it's good it better be with all the money they've had thrown at it so there you go guys, that's Elite Dangerous. It's a very good game if you're into space combat and trading. It's currently the best I've played out there and uh, it's worth a buy at £20.